15 movies with amazing costume design. Costume design is one of the most important jobs in the film industry, but it's also one of the most thankless. As many videos on this channel prove, you can learn just as much about a character from their wardrobe as you can by what they say. So, in no particular order, here are 15 films that I believe have absolutely amazing costume design. And just a note, when I say amazing, I don't necessarily mean award-winning or historically accurate or expensive. I just mean that without the costumes being what they are, the film wouldn't be nearly as good as it is. And as is the theme of this channel, the focus will be on the female characters' wardrobes. Marie Antoinette Often referred to as the queen of fashion, it comes as no surprise that a movie about Marie Antoinette's life would be outfitted to the nines. Led by costume designer Milena Cannonero, many of the costumes in the film were created specifically for it, or were taken from other period pieces Cannonero designed for, like Barry Lyndon or The Affair of the Necklace. As is the case for many specialty dresses, you can spot many of them reused in other period pieces like A Royal Affair or Harlots. Whether it's the beautiful dresses, elaborate wigs, or fabulous shoes, the costumes were more than deserving of their Oscar win. Besides Kirsten Dunst doing some of her best work on this film, the costume design also helps us make a clear distinction from the young and naive Marie dressed in pastels at the beginning of the film to the mature and muted outfits nearing the end of her life. If you want a quick look at just how fantastic Marie's dresses in this movie were, I'd suggest looking up the I Want Candy scene, or alternatively, watch our video on Marie's outfits. I'll link it somewhere. Memoirs of a Geisha We can get into how problematic this movie and book were another day, but from a visual standpoint, Memoirs of a Geisha is a work of art. The costumes for the film were designed by the great Colleen Atwood, the same mind behind Chicago, The Tourist, Alice in Wonderland, and a lot more. Atwood herself refers to kimono as an art form, which is an apt description considering kimono is such an important part of Japanese culture. There are a variety of different styles of kimono from different time periods, with the design, color, and fabric of a kimono being used as an indication of one's rank, gender, age, and level of refinement. The importance of the kimono is not only reflected in the dialogue of the film, but also in the clothes the characters wear. Mameha is given a more neutral color palette representing her calm demeanor, while Hatsumomo regularly wears vibrant colors such as red or purple that match her fiery temper. Considering the film follows Sayuri most closely, she is probably the best example of Atwood's skill since you can see how her character's rank as a geisha influences the kimono she has access to and wears. Black Panther Ruth Carter is the much-deserved winner of the Academy Award for Best Costume Design for her revolutionary work on the Black Panther movie. Her Afro-futurist designs were equal parts tradition and innovation, with each character being given a wardrobe that accurately reflects the African tribe they are a part of. Carter used some traditional techniques like hand painting, as well as some new ones like 3D printing, to get the right look for the Wakandans. I think it results in a truly beautiful look to the entire world and helps make it seem all the more real and lived in, which is quite a difficult task for a movie set entirely in fiction. I highly recommend checking out her Vanity Fair video where she explains some of the outfits in further detail and far better than I could ever hope to. Clueless. An iconic piece of 90s filmography, Clueless is perhaps the most obvious example of the modern preppy style that continues to be popular today. With costumes designed by Mona May, every single character in Clueless, including those in the background, are sporting amazingly trendy outfits that are still somewhat age appropriate. Did you know that the costume choices subtly set a timeline for the school year? Obviously, the movie begins with Sharon Dion's first day outfits, then they go on to wear darker autumnal tones for the fall semester, with people wearing red or green to the Christmas party in the valley. Then everyone begins sporting pastels once spring begins. Cher's first day ensemble is actually a Dolce & Gabbana suit, and her red dress is, of course, an Aliyah. However, Mona May also included some mall fashion and thrifted pieces to tie the looks together and make them appear like real high schoolers. High schoolers with money, of course. Mona May's self-proclaimed girly style can be seen in other iconic works, including Never Been Kissed, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, The House Bunny, both Xenon sequels, The Wedding Singer, Enchanted, and much more. If you haven't watched the Clueless TV show yet, I highly recommend checking it out. There's just as many iconic looks in that as there are in the movie. Gone with the Wind Designed by Hollywood legend Walter Plunkett, the costumes in Gone with the Wind are undeniably unforgettable. Plunkett spent months researching historically accurate garments and even produced many of his costumes in a similar fashion as they would have been made at the time. While you can't deny that what made Scarlett O'Hara most memorable is Vivian Lee's perfect performance, we still have to give some credit to the man who was able to dress her from Southern Belle to starving and destitute to unbelievably wealthy. Many of the outfits in this film are my favorites in film history, which is saying something considering this movie movies nearly a hundred years old. Other films he costumed that you may be familiar with are Little Women, Singing in the Rain, and The Glass Slipper. 
Titanic. Deborah Lynn Scott is the Oscar-winning designer in charge of costuming the romantic epic that is Titanic. From the very first moment you see Rose DeWitt Bacator, you're instantly made aware not only of her class, but also how trapped she is. The white and purple gown is tight-fitted and she's covered from head to toe, symbolizing how confined she is by her own status. This wildly differs from her dress in the final act of the film, which is not only made of a lighter and looser fabric, but is less rigid than her previous dresses. This shows how she's developed as a character during her time on the Titanic and through her love of Jack. House of Flying Daggers. Designed by Emmy Wada, the costumes in House of Flying Daggers are not only remarkably historically accurate, but also unbelievably beautiful and elegant. Because the film features many scenes where the characters are fighting, movement is key, and the costumes reflect that. The fabrics fly in the air gracefully, almost resembling water, and are vivid and colorful enough to keep our focus, which is quite a feat when you look at some of the backgrounds. My favorite costume must be Shang Zui's pink dress. I recommend checking out the drum dance scene on YouTube. It's breathtaking. What a way to go. The costumes for this film were designed by Edith Head, aka the inspiration for Edna Mode in The Incredibles. The designer was loaned out to the picture from Paramount and was provided with over $3 million in jewels and half a million in dresses. As Miss Head said so herself in an interview, if you ran the movie without sound, the clothes would tell you the story which is definitely true. If you're unfamiliar with the movie, I won't spoil it, but I will say that the lead character, played by Shirley MacLaine, goes through a series of financial and romantic ups and downs. This results in several different styles of fashion, each more extravagant and beautiful than the last. I'm perhaps most fond of her outfits when she is Mrs. Mitchum. The Devil Wears Prada. Perhaps best known for her revolutionary work on Sex and the City, costume designer Patricia Field was given the Herculean task of outfitting the now iconic characters in The Devil Wears Prada. This was no easy task as not only would it be quite expensive to dress these fashionable characters, but many within the fashion industry were fearful of upsetting Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour, who served as the inspiration for Miranda Priestly. Patricia Field was able to supplement the meager $100,000 costume budget with items lent to her by acquaintances and friends in the industry. Industry. She actually believes that the total wardrobe would have amounted to over a million dollars, making it one of the most expensive costumed films in history. Considering the collection of Chanel that Andy wears throughout the film and some of Miranda's jewelry, that number sounds about right. One thing that makes The Devil Wears Prada stand out in comparison to the wardrobes of other 2000s films is its timelessness. Unlike others of its ilk, the outfits in The Devil Wears Prada would work just as well now as they did 15 years ago when the film was first released. The Great Gatsby one of many adaptations of the F. Scott Fitzgerald novel, the 2013 Great Gatsby's Oscar-winning costume design is by Katherine Martin, the wife and frequent collaborator of director Baz Luhrmann. She also worked on the costumes for Australia, Romeo and Juliet, and Moulin Rouge. If that wasn't a bit of a giveaway, historical accuracy isn't really her game. Working in collaboration with Mucha Prada, the film has a distinctive 1920s meets 2010s look to it. While some of the costumes are altered pieces from the Prada archives, many were created and designed specifically with this film in mind. As I mentioned earlier, the costumes are far from being historically accurate. The fit and cut of many of the men's suits are wrong for the time period, and the women's dresses are far too form-hugging with way too many embellishments. Despite all of that, however, they're a perfect fit for the more modern and fantastical tone of the film. I know some people will be upset that I didn't pick the far more accurate 1974 version, but as I said at the beginning of the video, that's my opinion. Frida. Frida Kahlo is perhaps one of the most important artists of the 20th century. While the film's production itself was a nightmare and the movie regularly blurs the line between fact and fiction, it's a beautiful representation of Kahlo's artistic vision and spirit. So kudos to costume designer Julie Weiss. Many pieces of clothing from the film are recreations of or are inspired by clothing that the real Kahlo wore or featured in her paintings. It's also a beautiful and vibrant look at Mexican clothing from the time period, which is something that is not often highlighted in the American film industry. If you're interested in learning more about Kahlo's fashion, you should check out the book Self-Portrait in a Velvet Dress, Frida's Wardrobe. My Fair Lady Designed by famed photographer, author, and painter Cecil Beaton, the film showcases the lavishness of high society in Edwardian London. Of the three films he designed for during his life, two won Oscars for Best Costume Design. One was Gigi, the other was My Fair Lady. The white dresses that Eliza wears to both the ball and the horse races are utterly beautiful, and those two scenes in the film are a sight to behold. The Fifth Element 
With costumes designed by Jean-Paul Gaultier, the sci-fi epic was guaranteed to have some killer outfits. Gaultier had final say on every single costume in the film, which results in a cohesive vision that is equal parts fantasy and futuristic. You probably remember Lilu's bandage outfit or orange cutout bodysuit the most, but you can't forget Ruby Rod's gender fluid looks or the eye-catching outfits of the working class like the McDonald's girl, flight attendants, or receptionists. In total, Gautier designed over 900 costumes for the lead actors and extras, and there's no denying that he's a master at his craft. Even if the looks aren't necessarily wearable, they sure do look good. Anne of the Thousand Days Winner at the 42nd Academy Awards, the costumes for Anne of the Thousand Days were created by English designer Margaret First. One of many retellings of Henry VIII's relationship with Anne Boleyn, the film is set in the Tudor era, specifically the early 1500s, and like many films set during that time period, modern day aesthetics took precedence over historical accuracy. One inaccuracy that continues to persist even in more recent films is the hoodless French hood. During the time period, no grown woman would be wearing her hair loose as it wasn't considered appropriate. A real French hood consisted of the structured coif at the top of the head and a black piece of fabric that would shield the hair and ears. It's not a headband. Besides that, the film is much more accurate than, say, The Tudors or The Other Boleyn Girl. And it doesn't hurt that Genevieve Bougeau looks totally gorgeous in every outfit she wears. 101 and 102 Dalmatians. I'm gonna lump both of these films together because they're sequels and the costumes are designed by the same person, Anthony Powell. Outfitting perhaps the most stylish and camp villain in the Disney universe is no easy task, but boy oh boy did Powell excel at it. The film's interpretation of Corella as the fur-obsessed head of a fashion house provided Powell the perfect opportunity to dress Corella in ways that some of us could only imagine. Pointed shoulder pads, manicured gloves, waist-cinching gowns, and magnificent millinery. With obvious influence influences of Chanel and Mugler, Cruella's extravagant and avant-garde pieces are perhaps the most memorable part of the two films. Add Glenn Close's perfect performance and you've got one of the best Disney live-action adaptations. Did you know that Close has it written into every film contract of hers that she's allowed to keep the costumes? Talk about genius. And before I end this video, I just wanted to take a minute to mention 20 other films with fantastic costume design that you should check out if you haven't yet. Elizabeth and Elizabeth the Golden Age, Alexandra Byrne, Jawbreaker, Vicki Barrett, The Duchess, Michael O'Connor, Cinderella, Sandy Powell, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, David Robinson, Curse of the Golden Flower, Yi Chungman, Mean Girls, Mary Jane Fort, American Hustle, Michael Wilkinson, Dream Girls, Sharon Davis, Emma, Alexandra Byrne, Phantom Thread, Mark Bridges, The Handmaiden, Sang Kyung Jo, Dave Das, Nita Lula, The Lizzie McGuire Movie, Monique Prudhomme and David Robinson, To Catch a Thief, Edith Head, Seven Year Itch, William Trevia, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Hubert de Givenchy and Edith Head, Mahogany, Diana Ross, Mirror Mirror, Eiko Ishioka, Anna Karenina, Jacqueline Duran. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to comment down below what movie has your favorite costume design, and don't forget to subscribe for more fun content. Love ya!